Today we have a new delivery from our friends at AliExpress, Sunco 788H. Sunco 788H. This is a two-in-one microcomputer spot welding and battery charger. It does two things, apparently. Here it is. Features include, oh, let's go through some of the specs. It's a 110 or 220 input. The current rating is from 2 amps to 15 amps. The welding current is 50 amps to 800 amps. And pulse times are 1 millisecond to 19 milliseconds. The, char the charging part here, this is to charge batteries, uh, I guess, goes from 4.2 volts to 36 volts. And the charging current goes from 0 to 3 but I'm not sure because zero starts here and three is here. So if, anyways, I don't know. That that would be one and a half, I guess. Anyways, I don't want to know. It weighs three, four kilograms, and it says range of sheet metal welding thickness is 0 0.1 to 0 0.25 millimeters. Now I've already gone and unboxed this this guy here, and I've put the welding tips in here. Now let's go over some of the front features. We have two power buttons. One is for charge which turns on the charging, I guess this lower section of it. And then there's the welding section. When you turn it on, it pops my breaker. So I have an extension cord running into the bathroom. I think this is a 15 amp, but I think you're gonna need a 20 amp breaker. So in the bathroom it has 20 amps and here it's only 15. So I pop it every time I turn it on. So that's that. Microcomputer control up to level 199. Then it says 99 star one. So I think this number here is the number of pulses, which is only one or two, and 40 is the, I don't know if that's the time between pulses or the power, because I think the current is down here. It has one or two pulse. There have one or two pulse to choose to faster welding. It have two current settings to fast set welding current, the maximum up to 16 pulse. Suit for welding thicker material. It doesn't really tell you what these first numbers are. In the diagram it says welding current display but then there's a set current knob here. Let's, let's just go through it. I'm getting too, too involved here. Let's go through it. There's a, there's, a, there's a button on the top here, a, a dial on the top. Welding pressure adjuster. Then we have welding current display. Then we have welding pulse display. Then we have welding charger power switch, yeah. Pedal control. This does come with a pedal that you can use, which is kind of cool. Battery charging voltage knob and current knob. Current uh, voltage. Positive electrode, negative electrode, battery test slash charger conversion key. I think all this does is tell you, you know, out or what, or in, whichever one tells you the uh, what the voltage of the battery is. Push it in means okay, you can charge it, and it'll tell you the amps it's pulling and all that kind of stuff. LED lights on the bottom, which is kind of nice. Head the fast set of welding current. This goes from zero to ten. There's a, there's a fuse on the back. There's a fuse on the back. A 30 amp fuse. So along with the welder, it came with this battery holder. These are magnetized. So if you put an 18650 in here, it, it has a slight ma uh, slightly uh, magnetized. You kind of do that. And I guess it keeps it straight. Comes with additional heads and uh, an Allen key and a couple extra fuses. Also came with some uh, nickel plating. Nickel, uh, nickel strips. So it came with uh, some of those. Basically, we're gonna find out what's a good setting for these 18650s here. This is a Samsung. I have some dead ones here too. So we'll probably work with these dead ones. Put this in here and then sort of come across the top and over here. Maybe. Right, and then I guess just out. Wow. So that was two quick welds. As you can see, it did weld, but it's very easy to pull off. Now, I do have the current set at zero, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this off, and I'm gonna increase the current to two, but I'm gonna leave this at 40 and two, but I'm gonna just gonna turn the current knob to two, and let's see what difference that has. Okay, so I did two more welds, and that came off pretty easy as well. I'm gonna crank this up to four, cranking it up to four. I'm gonna try it again. So 
So that's another two, and it, it didn't it didn't stick at all. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the value here. So if you hit this button, all right, four, five, five, six, and I go sixty, and leave it at two, and leave it at four. I'm going to try it again. didn't fall off this time, but it's very easy to pull out. This to 80. Whoa, big sparks. <laughs> big sparks, bigger sparks, much bigger sparks. So now we have uh, the weld is on here, and you know what? That, that would be just difficult to pull off. I can pull it off, but I just, I'm basically ripping the, the nickel plating there. That seems pretty good. And I'm just going to bring the current up to six now, because I don't know what exactly the, the relationship is between this dial and this number. That seems like a good weld too. Yeah, that's a good weld. And probably just, I probably... Or double, or probably just double tap these. I put about six welds, I would think. Yeah, but that's that's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and increase this to eight. Now I can see now that there's a little bit of a of a burn mark in focus. There's a little bit of a burn mark. There, I haven't seen that before. A little bit of a burn mark there. So I'm gonna rip that out. Yeah, so that's a pretty good weld. That is a pretty good weld. These are dead batteries, so I don't really care. I'm gonna crank this, this to 10, and yeah. So you can see that burn mark a little more pronounced. So I think that that is adding amperage. It's real tough to get out. So these I'm assuming are the 0.1 millimeter uh, nickel strips. So I'm going to try with some other ones that I purchased. They're a lot wider A, but I don't know if they're thicker. I think they, yeah, oh yeah, they're thicker. I don't know if these are 0.2, but they do seem pretty thick. Pretty thick. So I'm going to see if how this does on a weld at this current setting. 80 and 10. You can see how it's covering the, the head of that battery. You can see how it's covering that pretty much the entire head of that battery. I'm going to plop this in. Oh yeah, that's a... Can you guys see that? It looks like a strong weld. I'm going to try and rip it out right now. That's not coming out. That is not coming off. Cut that. Grab this and try to rip it off. Man. Yeah, so those welds are not going uh, anywhere. In conclusion, so far it does seem to actually work and it does seem to work quite well. You gotta be careful with those um, with those strips, they're a little bit thick, they're ripping the plastic off the off the sides there, so they're they might be a little bit these might be a little bit too thick. The ends might be too thick, but anyways you can just chop those off. You can just custom cut the nickel strips the way you want them to sit. Uh, so that's pretty good. Next we'll see, I'm going to plug in the foot pedal here. So I have the foot pedal. That seemed to also work. Now if I, the foot pedal is engaged and I push this up, that doesn't work. It almost seems like there's more power with the pedal. Okay, so that was that stuck very well. It didn't it didn't burn a hole through. So yeah, I think I just I just turned the current. Eh, that doesn't come out. I'm gonna change this now. 
to, instead of two pulse, we're going to go to one pulse. gone down to a single pulse. So I just I just shot two pulses in there. And see it didn't stick very well. Now also there's 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 getting a little bit there's too many little weld spots now so I don't know if I'm making really good contact. So I'm gonna go to a battery that I haven't really used the top too much on. Put two welds there. And we're gonna pull that off, and that came off pretty easily too. So I don't know. I think you just have to. I think a lot of it is the way the contact is made uh, on the on the battery. Obviously, the top, the positive uh, end is going to be a lot more difficult, I think, than the negative end. But let me just see if I plug this back in. If that makes any difference, or if I feel any difference, you know, on the power here. Better, but it came. It still came. I mean, it was it was welded. I'm I'm, I'm pulling them off pretty. I'm ripping them off pretty hard, so, you know, let's try the bottom of one again. This one was really, really welded really well. It's almost like you might want to turn the amp up on the top portion, maybe? I'm not sure. Again, I don't know if I'm making really good contact here. I'm going to turn this up to, 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 no, I'm going to leave it at 8 into the bottom. See, I don't think it's see that left a burn mark. It left a burn mark. It made a hole. I don't think I'm making really good contact. I think it's I'm hitting a, an existing welding spot there. That or I'm just not because I'm using this this thing. I'm not putting enough pressure. So maybe what I'll do is I will turn this welding pressure adjuster knob. Sorry guys. I will turn this welding pressure adjuster knob all the like as much as I can to the tight position. Let's see what that does. Okay, so I'm gonna try that. Oh yeah. I think I burnt a hole through this one again too. Yeah, I burnt a hole again through. So I'm not sure. I'm gonna turn the current down to six. This one seemed to go okay, but nope, it fell right off. I think at a certain point you need to. Like I'm trying to re-weld all these now, and you know. I don't think that's ideal, so I'm going to file off some of these, or oh, that's a bad idea, see I'm stripping the plastic, which is not good. Not so bad with the negative, because the entire battery up until here is negative, but we don't want the positive touching the negative, that's for sure. Might be a better way of, of cleaning this, maybe with a maybe with a Dremel or something, you could just you could clean the welding spots if you do make a mistake and clean those welding spots, but you don't want to strip the sheathing off the battery. So let's, let's test the next uh, function of this, which is the uh, battery charging. And they read zero and zero. So I'm going to take my probe, I'm going to take a battery that I know has some voltage. I'm going to go negative to positive. What do I get? 3. Point, can you guys read that? 3.94. I think I'm in the testing phase. 3.94. Let's test another one. Well, you guys love these. Ultrafire. 3.78. Okay, so 3.78. Let's take one more. 3.2.0. Okay. Okay, there we go. 3.86. I am going to take this Ultrafire that said it was 3.78. I'm going to hit this button. It's at 4.2 volts right now. Or, yeah, we should just keep it on the, on the bottom there. <laughs> 4.2 volts and zero current and three. So I'm gonna put this to halfway and let's see if it charges. Now it looks like it's pulling a 0.7 of an amp and the reading is now at four volts. So I'm gonna take that off and I'm just gonna put the put the amperage high. What's the highest setting? And it looks like it's pulling the same. 0.7. Now I don't know if this is because this charger knows to put it in constant current mode or voltage mode or what. I have a fan here. I have just a regular case fan that's 12 volts, so let's see if I hook this up. So yeah, it looks like we're at 13, 
It's saying it's pulling 13 volts at 0.17 of an amp. I don't know how accurate that is. That's, an amp. that's, eight, that's 24 volts. Really? I don't know about that. So let me just turn this down a bit. We're at 25 volts, and it's speeding up as I. Okay, so I'm gonna take my multimeter. I gotta see how accurate this is. So it's saying 19.38 volts, right? Okay, multimeter says. Multimeter says what? It says 20.29. So yeah, it's off by it's off by quite a bit, but it's off by pretty much an entire well, an entire volt. So you don't want, you don't want to be using this this for anything delicate here. You know, a volt. Yeah, it's not that much, but yeah, it is actually quite a bit when you think when you come to think about it. So it is pulling 20 volts. It says 36 volt max. I don't know about that. I'm just going to disconnect the fan so I don't blow it. And we're going to go, we're going to crank it up to full voltage. And yeah, it's actually saying 36.94 volts. And this one says 35. So yeah, it's off. It's off by quite a bit. But I mean, you're not really going to use, you're not really going to use this, I don't think, for anything. You buy this machine for the spot welding uh, purpose. I don't think you buy it for much else. So there you have it. Uh, quick quick review on this spot welding machine. Also, I wouldn't cross these right now. I don't know if this has protection in it or not, so. Uh, what else is there? Yeah, that's about it. Turn the current down, turn the voltage down. Let's see if it remembers the setting from before. Turn it off, turn it on. Yep, it's back at 80. So there you have it. The Sunco, or is it? Sunco 788H, Alibaba. It does work. I bought it from a, a seller that had some feedback. Um, I know that there's been, I know that there's been some um, users that report that they have purchased this item and it doesn't work as advertised. But you know, you're always when you're buying from AliExpress, you're always taking a small risk there. So I would say buy from you know the buyer that's got the most feedback. This wasn't the, the cheapest. This wasn't the cheapest seller, so I kind of went with someone that was in between. You know, in between prices, it cost me about 200 and 200 and something dollars in Canadian uh, dollars. I think I saw it for 180 or 160, but anyways, I just chose the seller that had the best feedback and everything. So there you have it. If there's anything you guys want me to test out with this thing, let me know. I will be eventually uh, creating some battery packs, but I have to figure out what I want to do because I'm always up and down. I'm always changing my mind about what the size of the pack and what I want to do with the pack. So anyways. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.